welcome to our uh, LinkedIn live event. Uh, so the event, uh, the topic that we're going to talk about today is the transition from IT service provider to strategic solution partner. Uh, so my name is Kishore. Uh, I'm the CEO and VP of uh, digital solutions here at Pronix. So I'll be your host for today. Uh, so we're going to get insightful panel discussion uh, started with the gentlemen that we have uh, you know, on this event. Uh, so we have these uh, industry experts, uh, you know, who have already navigated or have been navigating through uh, pivotal transition. So transforming their organizations from traditional IT service uh, providers to you know, innovative and uh, strategic partners, working along the lines with the clients. Uh, so with me, I have uh, uh, Bala, Bala Sundar. He's from Lateral Insights. Uh, so I will, they, uh, I will let them introduce uh, as well. My name is Manish. organization um, we have evolved ourselves in, in line with the discussion that we will be having so I am responsible for data and analytics as a part of IBM and more recently around Gen AI and its offering um, happy to be a part of this call and as we move along uh, I will learn as well as share my insights Thank you, Mitesh. Uh, Bala? Hi, uh, I'm Bala Sundar. I live in uh, Virginia. Um, I used to have a company called Syapps, which uh, I started and built it for 16 years, sold it in 2019. And after the three-year transition, I'm back into the business of consulting services. Um, there was an interesting topic that you had uh, for today, pivoting from being a staff off to a strategic solutions partner which a lot of companies struggle with. Uh, hopefully I can share what insights I have and looking forward for the conversation. Thank you, Bala. Rajat? Hey, thanks, Kishore. Uh, great to be here. Uh, and hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Rajat, Rajat Sharma. I'm based out of uh, Princeton in New Jersey. Uh, I am the chief growth officer for Zensar. Uh, so what it means is uh, the whole uh, sales and marketing uh, is my portfolio. Plus, of course, uh, I also lead the platform business, uh, which uh, runs across all the three core hyperscalers. Uh, I have been in the industry for more than three decades, uh, and um, I can probably summarize my career in three by three by three. I've worked in uh, three core industry verticals, banking, financial services, insurance. Uh, I've worked in healthcare life sciences and uh, communication, media, and tech. I've worked in uh, three core function areas, uh, of course, uh, the PNL uh, in terms of vertical responsibility, leading PNL roles. I've worked uh, building practices as well as uh, I have uh, the third is uh, the delivery. And I've worked in three geographies. So I've worked in uh, North America, of course, is one of the core. Uh, second is Asia Pack. I worked extensively in Asia Pack, uh, including uh, Singapore, Malaysia, and Australia. I was the founding member for Peru Systems business in APAC. Uh, and then last, of course, uh, I worked uh, extensively in LATAM and uh, Canada as well. Uh, prior to Zensar, I was a partner at uh, Deloitte and Accenture. And uh, before that, I was a founding member of Cloud Practice at Cognizant. So let's get started. Uh, so defining the transition, right? So the topic itself is the transition from IT service provider to a strategic partner, right? So, so let's uh, set the stage for our discussion. Uh, so Manish, uh, if we could start with you. So how do you define the transition uh, from being an IT service provider to uh, becoming a strategic solution partner? So what are the key factors uh, that would actually you consider as a shift in the organization? Well, I think uh, uh, any transition for that matter is not a straightforward process. Uh, the same thing applies for IT organizations who are trying to move from a, a traditional IT services organization into a strategic uh, solutions partner. So definitely transition is not a straightforward process. Uh, and there is not one definition that fits all in terms of how do you define it. Uh, however, I think there are certain areas that I would like to highlight that primarily are the key attributes for any organization who are trying to do this transition. I think to start with, it's absolutely important to, for an 
IT services organization to actually sh shift their focus from being a reactive organization to a proactive organization. Let's not look at every engagement as a one-off engagement. Uh, however, we are not, every engagement is not a transition, but we should also move at looking at that engagement to build and mine customer stickiness as we move along. Secondly, I think uh, while IT services organizations are, uh, are focused on the customer, but I think to move to being a strategic partner, it's important to be uh, absolutely customer centric. That's number two. And number three, most of the services need to be aligned to the use cases and the needs of the business. So we need to be in a position to hear the challenges of the customer and work with them uh, in a co-creation mode, rather than it being a one-way conversation of we providing our recommendations. So holistically, I would I would define this as some of the key attributes for organizations who are trying to move from A to B. Uh, for, for us as an organization, I think some of the key factors that have influenced uh, this transition, and, and it's an ongoing journey, uh, it's a maturity that organizations need to go through, is that, yes, uh, the, the focus has increased to being more customer centric. Uh, there's a lot of focus that we are putting in to build a, a very robust uh, and a deep down partner ecosystem. You are mm -hmm. as good as your partners, just like leaders are as good as their team. So I think in the need to do this transition, you, you need to have a good, robust partner ecosystem. Number three uh, uh, is that uh, for us and for the larger ecosystem in terms of either the partners or the customers, it's the, the nature of business uh, is evolving in a way that we need to focus on emerging technologies and how those emerging technologies would have influence in the businesses of the customer. So I think for, for, for us as an organization, focusing on emerging technology, specifically on the cloud part, on the automation part, on the AI part, uh, and, and now more, more around the Gen AI part is another factor uh, that, that we need to consider. And last but not the least, uh, we are in a situation where everything needs to be agile. However, it needs to be aligned to the customer needs. So an organization's ability to build center of excellences that are not just industry focused, but they are also use case focused from a end customer standpoint is an area uh, or an important key factor to consider. So uh, for us as an organization, we are increasing our focus on, on really building or deepening our investments on center of excellences and also thus building assets and accelerators which can uh, which can, which can actually add to the reusability and agility when it comes to the end time. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much, uh, Manish. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really fascinating to hear you know, how the shift is characterized in different organizations. So Bala, anything you want to add uh, from your perspective? Say, so, uh, as a... A strategic partner, right? So you you are someone who is part of their goals and vision, right? So you you are someone who's going to contribute a significant value to the client's vision and the goal. As a staff org, you just provide resource. You don't care about more than that, right? So this goes a little bit more deeper. Uh, and that is going to happen if you have, uh, if you establish mutual trust, very critical. And there is a shared risk that you both you as well as the client are going to take. And there is a shared responsibility to deliver the project, right? Um, so it, it becomes very significant um, for you to have the stakeholder buy-in, someone who is there who would bat for you from the client end, right? And 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 you having the capability to deliver, right? Um you, so you deliver what you promise. And, and the most important thing that I've seen is to be able to say no when you have to say no, right? 
and and right. stay independent uh, as a consulting services partner and and not take sides within the organization you'll see multiple groups that kind of have their own uh, projects that need to get executed but you need to stay as an independent uh, third party vendor who can provide you provide the client with full insights I think that is okay. critical. Once you know that you can meet these capabilities, then you have to look at your own inventory of what specific capabilities that you have that you can go to market with. Okay. Once you're there, then you're ready to kind of make the shift. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's very interesting to see how different organizations will interpret, uh, you know, the transition basically, as you said. Yeah. Right. So they have to be strategic as they have to be tactical as well, right? At the same time. So, sure. so and they have to solve the real time, sorry, near time and long term, uh, short term and long term go objectives as well. Uh, so what has helped Rajat, is one of the client is we, we basically put together a four year roadmap for them to say mm -hmm. this is how we'll start and this is how we'll progress in the next three to four years, which the client brought in and we kind of made sure that we stick to the plan, um, then you're contributing to a much larger, um, what do you call goal and vision. And you need to be constantly aligned with their goals and vision on an annual basis uh, as they make the shift. Yeah. So that will address the both short-term goals as well as the long-term uh, business goals. Sounds good. Okay. So Rajat, anything you want to add? No, I, I think uh, Manish and uh, Bala has covered it pretty well. A couple of things I just want to touch upon, uh, which are more of challenges, as you mentioned, of uh, some of the IT service providers. So one is basically uh, the whole mind share, right, of the clients become that um, you are just an IT service provider or, and they start basically uh, bucketizing you into that category, right? So how do we basically make the pivot from that category into becoming a strategic partner, right? Is is something uh, which uh, of course uh, uh, I've done several times in num multiple number of companies. Uh, but one of the core uh, area is basically, and that's why I was talking about three by three by three, is that how do you go beyond technology? How do you start looking into the industry, the industry challenges, the business challenges? of the client, mm -hmm. right? And how much research you can do around the client persona as a, not just individual personas, of course, it comes from uh, industry research to account research to persona research, right? And to Bala's point, that is where you uncover the whole uh, goal uh, and vision of that company, right? And how can you basically then build the, proposition to help them move from point A to point B, right? In terms of target, or I would love to call it more future state because it's ever evolving rather than a target state, right? So that's basically one thing uh, which I wanted to highlight because that's a practical challenge uh, which we all go through and uh, we all embrace. And as a part of marketing activity, I, I do that uh, most of the times uh, along with my research team out here. The second area is uh, moving transitioning in terms of the construct of engagement, right? As we spoke about, most of the service provider engagements are more time and material basis or staff augmentation basis. So how can we move up the value chain from staff augmentation uh, to a fixed price, a kind of project, right? Where we co-create and jointly define the scope of that project. Right. right. And then how do we go from fixed price to an output based or a transaction based pricing? So if you want to basically run certain operations, how do we attach the operations into various transaction based pricing, be it uh, based on database instances, server instances, uh, your storage capacity and so on and so forth. Right. And then finally, ultimate strategic uh, thing happens when you go in the outcome based where I attach the business value and business drivers for the right. client to basically look into. Yeah. So th those are the two things I wanted to highlight. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, so Rajat, I think you already uh, started this conversation uh, while you were explaining. So there are obviously we encounter a lot of challenges. Every transition, I mean, as Manish said, 
everything is a transition, right? So every transition will bring challenges. And uh, so let's delve into these, you know, challenges. And so, Sabala, maybe I will start with you. So what are the most significant challenges or uh, your organization, especially, faced during this transition from uh, being a service provider to strategic power? And how did you overcome them? So, so when you when you are looking to shift to becoming a, a solutions provider, right? There's that's one major challenge. Most companies, when they send out their RFPs, they ask for three specific things. One is the revenue size, your past experience, and they ask for three client references where you delivered products, right? Now, being a staff org vendor at, at a few clients, then you want to make a shift. You don't have this pre-qualification. Sometimes you don't have projects delivered end-to-end. -end. You've not taken on full responsibility. So what do you do at that point, right? And, and a lot of clients that we've seen, they provide these SOW-type work to large organizations like IBM, Pricewaterhouse, because it's one way to, it, it's it's more of a CYA, you know, cover your ass when something goes wrong, but everything goes right, no issues. So you go in and with an unknown brand, right? You have a challenge right now to kind of convince the client that you are someone that the client can trust and, and they can extend that offer uh, on a, what do you call, as a solutions provider. So you so for that, you need to have some sort of a predefined accelerator, at least developed, some unique methodology that you're going to use to deliver the project. Um, so any sort of, um, what do you call, creative way of structuring the, the financial model uh, in terms of pricing. That could be an onshore offshore model, right? Something that is more convincing for a client to say, this is something that is that I can take a chance. And above all, it takes time for you to build a relationship within the client and build the trust for them to say, okay, I'm going to take a chance and give you uh, an SOW work, right? Sometimes you can quantify the staff org work as, an, as a pre-qualification for you to go in and bid. Um, but at the end of the day, you still have the challenge on a daily basis until someone takes a chance on you and gives you that opportunity to go and deliver. But once they give that, then it's your full responsibility to take full ownership and, and deliver the project successfully and build on it. Okay. I mean, so overcome, overcoming those challenges is basically, you know, indeed a very commendable job, right? So, yeah, it is a challenge, but you have to keep trying and you, you will definitely succeed. Right. Okay. So, Rajat, anything you want to add in terms of what challenges, you know, you must have gone through or within Chansar or uh, previous organizations during the transition phase? Right, right, right. So I think Bala covered it from the, so so I, I consider challenges on the both sides. So there are internal challenges and external challenges. So external challenges are more in terms of the requirements, what Bala was referring to, which comes from the outside to consider you as a reliable partner or reliable strategic partner, right? Then in, yeah. So I'll probably highlight more on internal since Bala covered the external ones. So internal challenges are, equally important, right? And which are actually ignored to a large extent by a lot of IT service provider. So when I talk about right. internal challenge, I can give example. When I joined Cognizant, Cognizant uh, today it's like 18 to $20 billion firm. And uh, when I joined, it was like 12 billion or so plus. Uh, and they had great capability in the application value management, right? So they were known for doing best of the breed services in terms of application development, maintenance, testing, and BPO services. But when, when it comes to the cloud services or the core infrastructure services, they were not basically considered, right? And one of the reasons was that we did not have the DNA built, right? When I say DNA built is what we did is we built something called as G2 organization, global infrastructure technology outsourcing organization. For right. building that, we required a lot of capability expertise around processes, around people, around tool stacks, right? And when I talk about the processes, processes for sizing or solutioning these deals, right? Processes around transition, setting up transition and transformation offers, right? Uh, tooling to basically run these large 
strategic operations, right? right. Tools to migrate, transform. So, so basically, one of the things which we ignore is in terms of, and of course, Manish spoke about the frameworks, the accelerators, the methodologies, right, which comes into play, right? So it's very, very important for internal readiness of service providers and invest mm -hmm. into this. Unless we are ready to invest into this, it, it will become more of a catch-up game. And uh, it's a conundrum uh, we all go through. Okay, thank you, Rajit. So, Manish, anything you want to add on top of? Yeah, I think Bala and Rajat covered internal and external well, uh, more or less. However, I think since your question was around what is what are the challenges that are being faced by the organization, I think for us, uh, uh, I would say challenges are faced on both sides by the organizations that uh, we are aligned to as well as our customers. Uh, more so with large enterprises uh, that I represent. Uh, I think uh, uh, we know recently uh, that our hardware business moved out to moved out from from a larger organization just to focus on on that bit, while the other part is purely focused on uh, consulting with the aim to to actually move from a or to extend our reach from being a product organization on the hardware as well as on the software side to extending our reach beyond IT services organization into consulting, which is where it segues into becoming a strategic partner uh, for our right. customers as well as within. So I think for a large organization like ours, uh, internal challenges have Internal and external, I think uh, I will I will combine both of them. One one the first one is basically resistance to change, right? Uh, it it applies to anyone and every everyone. Any new technology, any new shakeup in the process, uh, any new acquisition, uh, either the organization acquires or somebody acquires, right? Any of these challenges uh, will come with a certain amount of resistance. Right. So resistance okay. to change uh, has been one of the areas, uh, internal as well as external. So, you know, uh, employees uh, are uh, typically, if not all of them, uh, a decent population is always resistant to change, uh, which can actually make it difficult to implement some of the new processes and technology. Secondly, right. I think it's lack of expertise. Uh, for anybody to move uh, from IT services to a strategic partner, it is not just the technical skills that, that need to evolve, uh, which Bala and Rajat highlighted, but I think it is it is also uh, the ability for a IT services organization to add that business acumen that means to be able to uh, have subject matter experts not on the tech stack, but even on the business, right? So that's the lack of expertise that might uh, be there for IT services organization, right? right. To to actually uh, build upon from a right. from a business side of things, from a client perspective, I think it's it's about having a brother in arm on the tech side with whom. They can have a representation on their board. They can have a representation uh, on their key engagements so that there is a, a co-creation that happens between the, the IT service provider or the strategic partner as well as the customer. And lastly, it's about the, the associated costs and expense. See, any, any transition that happens from A to B will have an associated cost. Right. So what we right. are talking about here is the, the transitioning to a new way of working kind of model. Right. If you have to build assets and accelerators, if you have to interlock with your businesses, if you have to co-create, there has to be a understanding wherein businesses are also willing to invest on a use case with a IT services partner who can then become a strategic partner and for the IT services also to be able to invest. So what we are talking about is co-creation by co-investing, 
both had need to have an equal skin in the game. Okay, and and that's also one of the challenges that needs to be overcome. Right. So an appetite to take early risks, investment, and have the right team mix is absolutely important. Uh, and these are some of the challenges that that I can share that we have experienced from our organization and customer perspective. I think the way we are trying to overcome that, it's not that we've overcome it, but we are on that journey, uh, uh, is, is through proactively uh, and continuously uh, build capacity. Not just build capacity on the tech side of things, but also build capacity on the business side of things. And that requires investment from a reskilling and upskilling perspective. And that's an ongoing process, right? It's it's just like learning. It's just like emerging technology. We the organizations, whether on the business or on the tech side, need to be reskilling reskilling and upskilling their employees on a regular basis. And then lastly, I think uh, uh, for for us to build, Bala spoke about building trust with the uh, clients or the customers, I think for us to be able to build that, uh, there, there needs to be IT services organizations need to have this concept of building a SWAT team or a squad that can that can early engage with the customer on a long-term basis. Uh, and, and this might require the thought leaders and experienced people on the team, not just from a project perspective, but also from an industry perspective. So holistically, I think these are some of the challenges that we have encountered and some of the steps that we are taking uh, in the journey to overcome. Got it. Okay. Thank you, Manish. I mean, we I think we have to have a lot of resilience uh, to employ all of these you know, strategies so that, you know, we don't, I mean, of course, challenges will come in every phase uh, of the, I mean, as we execute. But you have to have a lot of, you know, res we have to learn different these challenges and, uh, you know, build the resilience. So, Rajat, so next one. Uh, so the technology integration, right? So the technology is the driving force. Uh, and we need to learn, I mean, we need to really integrate this technology into our, uh, you know, to become a strategic uh, partner as well, right? Uh, both for service provider as well as a strategic partner. So can you share some insights on how these uh, the emerging technologies uh, have been integrated into your strategic solutions and uh, the impact uh, that you have had on our services when you yeah, integrate absolutely. these. Uh... Yeah, ahead. absolutely, Kishore. Uh, uh, of course, uh, technology is very close to my heart also. And uh, as uh, we uh, mentioned, and uh, we've started our discussion with IT services and how can we pivot into more of a strategic partner. Uh, technology plays a very pivotal role. And of course, uh, our uh, tagline uh, today at Zensar is uh, experience-led domain-oriented engineering. And the engineering piece is basically the technology component, right? But of course, technology is not the only thing, right? As we spoke about the domain, the industry is very important. And why we talk about experience is because, uh, of course, uh, every program uh, or every application or every operations needs to be consumed by someone, right? So how do we think from their experience point of view, be it internal customers, external customers, partners or vendors or so on and so forth, right? So coming back to your whole thing on how to enable the technology, right? Uh, because it's a, it's a, it's a ocean. It's, it's a huge uh, ocean of, so many new technologies uh, being evolved, so many new technologies which are actually taking birth every month, right? Because of the kind of startup ecosystem we have, right? So just keeping abreast with the latest and greatest in the technology is very, very critical and important. However, one of the things which we should consider is in terms of uh, not trying to boil the ocean, right? Uh, for service for smaller service providers, like at Zensar, we basically cut across because we have a scale, like we are 12,000 plus people. Uh, we are 600 mm -hmm. million. And uh, we have uh, our own Zen labs where we do a lot of incubation, 
right? And uh, we were one of the first starters when uh, Microsoft announced uh, the partnership with OpenAI. So how we basically embraced and created our own engineering buddy uh, using Copilot and uh, uh, the Gen AI concepts, right? Which reduces the cycle time for development of uh, projects by almost 45 to 50%, right? From ideation to rollout, right? But for smaller service providers, I would highly advise that don't go and boil the ocean, but define your playing field. And maybe a lot of service providers are basically like playing in this TNM world and placing the bodies uh, based on whatever skill requirements comes to them. But I would suggest go ahead, do a segregation, take stock of your inventory of your resources uh, okay. and do a classification in terms of where what percentage of technologies are bulk of your business. Is it cloud? Is it ERP systems? Uh, is it infrastructure services? Is it custom application development? Go and then build the muscle in that. So and use that as a springboard to actually mm -hmm. change the playing field rather than trying to boil the ocean with technologies. Because uh, if you try to basically do uh, across the board and go beyond, uh, then you will one is you'll require lots and lots of investments and second is uh you may not be very very successful competing against the big boys right okay sounds good so yeah i mean technology is uh, adds very critical aspect of it so bala anything you want to add in terms of building uh usually i have seen companies even ours so we build certain uh technology key key technology enablers or solutions where we are really specialized in, and then we go after them to become a strategic partner. So it stops, as Rajesh said, it's very vast. You can't just swim around the ocean, but we have to sure. pick a pond to first to swim around. So Bala, you sure. in, in a lot of cases, what we have seen is, I mean, you, you could come up with N number of technology and tools that you want to integrate as part of your project execution and how you want to deliver. But 80% of the case, the client already has a set of tools and, and technology that they want to stick with, right? If this is something which is going to be a game changer that you bring to the table, makes sense for you to propose something, right? Unless otherwise, they would not want you to come in and kind of mess up their process in the system that they already have. They would want you to work within the framework that they, that they have, right? right? A couple of things which we have always emphasized, which is, added value and people respect you for what you bring to the table is your DevSecOps, your, your DevOps pipeline, which is absolute must on any projects that we deliver, right? Uh, any agile methodology, the, the way you capture the stories and how you build those stories, absolutely important. And some of the tool sets that you can define before when you start the project, or maybe your Microsoft project plan, your Jira, where you're going to capture all your issues, your Bitbucket, where you're going to have all your code tracking, code commit, and all those, or Atlassian or Confluence for document repository. There are some basic set of tools and technology that need to be there as part of a project that you're executing that you could propose, but the client is going to kind of take that and come back and say, this is what is the framework that I want, to, want the team to work with, right? right. Because it's not just you, your team, who's comfortable with these tools and technology, the client team also have to be comfortable with, and they need to take ownership of this once you're done with your project, right? Every Absolutely. project, you kind of take it and deliver, but they also have to take ownership on it. Um, so as as uh, Rajat said, don't boil the ocean, but kind of play that in a way that the framework has the necessary tools and technology um, that will meet the purpose. Got it. Okay. Thank you, Bala. Anything you want to add, Manish, in terms of uh, integrating technologies uh, to become a strategic partner? Yeah, I think for us, uh, technology integration has been really important, primarily because uh, we, are, we are a product organization as well. And we have our product offerings as well. However, we have a large partner ecosystem uh, where we cooperate as well. And typically, uh, if I put myself in uh, the shoes of the customer, uh, there is so much there, right? Uh, 
it is very difficult to find almost every customer uses everything from a tech stack perspective right right be it, uh, erp speed crm uh, be it ai uh, be it data services i mean you name the technology it's always a heterogeneous environment while we say that uh, a technology is helping uh, optimize our processes we are at a point in time wherein more of everything is actually the problem mm -hmm. so heterogeneous environment is a landscape issue from a tech perspective uh, that uh, businesses are facing uh, and even it service providers are facing uh while there is a greater adoption in terms of open source uh but the question or the exclamation mark always remains open source still continues to be open right so at a certain point in time who takes the owner and a lot of times we do realize that businesses uh, are more willing to shake hands with a strategic partner if number one they can provide use cases and customer references uh with other customers who have integrated such emerging technologies in their particular industry okay that is that is basically the deal breaker right you right. will you will do well on the rfp response you will match your pricing but you need to have real use cases in that industry implemented at a customer place that you can provide as a reference which will break the deal okay right. make or break right so for for that to happen uh, for our organization uh, i will speak for the organization that i represent here uh, that's the largest customer base right we are about a lakh and a half people spread across almost all all the countries that you can uh, you know, think of and that's the largest customer base that we have right so technology integration on emerging technology has been first uh, and and it has been a part of the dna that most of the emerging technologies or uh, the products uh, that our organization has built upon they have been first implemented across the various business processes and use cases that we have within our organization right and there could be a a a, a a finance vertical which is horizontal to all industry right there could be a hr uh, division uh, or a talent acquisition which is a part of hr which is horizontal to all the right so uh, for us a technology integration on emerging technologies uh, is first implemented across various business processes within our organization and that in turn becomes a good customer reference because we've got use cases that work that can help us verticalize across a, a, a lot of departments if you may uh, just like i said uh, it could be finance it could be hr uh, it could be marketing right so our ability to implement or integrate the tech stack within our organization is a, a real differentiator for us when we are trying to position ourselves as a strategic partner with our existing customers or for new customers because hey you already have a large enterprise uh, which you can always consider to be a combination of smaller enterprises and use that as a reference to any of the existing uh, any of our existing customers or or uh, new prospects that we are trying to attract. so i think that's that's where uh, the technology integration has a very key role to play uh, for the organization that that i have. got it got it that, that is you, you're talking about ibm manish yes <laughs> that is large organization so companies which are in the mid size i think you you could develop solutions by industry right yeah. if you're looking at yeah. financial services right ml ai there's a lot of financial modeling type you going into manufacturing key is your iot your industry 2.0 then those are the things that you could probably build some capabilities and 
um, what do you call um, solutions that you can go to market with. Healthcare data science is a big um, from a technology standpoint. So you need to carve out specific area where yeah, you can. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right, and and that's where I uh, did highlight that. Uh, you're right that the organization is a large enterprise, but it's an enterprise with smaller organizations within. Uh, sure. So depending upon what we are trying to pitch and to whom pitch. we are trying to pitch, there are instances wherein unique use cases that might have been applied to financial and accounting within this large enterprise might be a good pitch for us to be able to do in the form of solutions or frameworks or artifacts that might exist. Uh, but yes, uh, that is that is an approach that we are trying to take for enterprises. It is it is a wider pitch, but for smaller organizations, it could be a subset of that wider pitch because we, we are able to verticalize it into uh, various uh, uh, departments or many enterprises. But that's a good yeah. point. Thank you, Manish. Thank you, Bala. So let's switch the gears here, right? So we, we, so far, I think we talked about from service provider angle, right? Uh, you know, how and what and challenges and how do you use technology as a piece uh, to solve the puzzle and, uh, you know. So let's switch the gears and then uh, maybe I'll go with Rajit. So the client expectations and feedback, right? So for example, you know, Bala has been into best of both worlds. When you announce to a known clients that, hey, suddenly overnight, you know, I became a strategic partner. So far, I'm a service provider. Now I'm wearing a different hat. So how do they take it? So what are the, uh, how the client expectations have evolved uh, or shifted? And how do you incorporate uh, their feedback, right? As you are working with them uh, into your, uh, you know, evolving strategies and solutions uh, to, to be in that place. No, great question, uh, Kishore. And um, that is something uh, which actually uh, happens very often, right? Because um, most of the service provider uh, account teams are more focused towards fulfilling the requirements, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than acting as a consultative sales leaders or consultative solutions leaders, right? right. And the expectation from the client side is they want someone to hear them out, someone to basically correlate and help them uncover the problem statement, right? The challenge in today's world, and uh, I, I'm a strong believer of we live in a VUCA world, right? There's so much of uh, volatility and ambiguity uh, in the world that even 70 to 80 percent of times when we meet a client client want something because something from the business driver like supply chain optimization is a basically very very broad term right so they come with that specific broader term so how do you narrow it down right what area of supply chain you need to optimize is it vendor management is it warehouse management is it uh, least cost routing what do you want to do right so you can only correlate to the client statement one is if you bring the domain expertise right of that specific yeah. functional area right of that specific industry second is client will start taking the service provider seriously if we are abreast of what kind of technologies are prevalent and what technology can do what particular function or what they are best at doing. So it again correlates to our earlier point of technology future proofing. So how much have we done in terms of the future proofing of the technology world, right? How much do we know? Like cloud providers, uh, both actually all three, Google, Microsoft, and Amazon, they infuse close to a billion dollar every month to create new functions, right? right? So how can we basically correlate and talk about those? SAP right. comes with a, a new mm -hmm. version. Of course, now it's basically, uh, uh, again, moving into uh, S4 HANA and so on and so forth. But again, uh, 
they are basically doing a lot of acquisitions also, right? Like the Fiori and all other things which came in, in the past. Uh, and how much can we talk about with the client which is best suited uh, or best in, not best in class, but best suited for them rather than always looking into the, the premium uh, Lamborghini uh, style of positioning, right? Because that is very, very important. And that's what the client want to hear and want to know. And the third thing is client will always take us seriously as a strategic partner if we show them value, value through business modeling, value through financial engineering, value through putting our skin in the game and making it right. out on the, the three things right. uh, which most of the clients will expect. Yeah. Okay. So, Bala, uh, anything you want to add in terms of the yeah, feedback that you see here? No, I think Rajat touched it um, really nicely on, on how to align uh, in terms of problem solving with the client, right? Um, the, the key is I'm, I'm kind of going to keep the focus very narrow to say on a project. So you're taking on a project and the feedback that you receive and then you're going to build on it. The key is to kind of define from the get-go what your terms and conditions are and what the scope is and what you're going to deliver, what the deliverables are and stick to it. Right. And what one thing that we have done in the past, even in Lateral Insights, the new company that I have right now, we're kind of shifting gears based on the lessons that I've learned in the past to say, what are some of the things that I'm going to stick to? One is we're never going to write SLAs or KPIs. It's going to be OKRs. Right. Once you start focusing the client towards OKRs, now you're aligning what they're going to measure your success against their objectives, the project objectives and what the key results are. Right. There are a few things that you can do to kind of make sure the client is aligned with you from the get go. So the feedback that comes back is at the end of the day, the client needs to be happy with what they have signed up, signed you up for and you delivered what they had asked for. Right. And then, as Rajat said, if you are able to work with them in terms of solving their critical problems, then I think you both work together to kind of provide that solution and develop the solution upon it. And then you get continuous project based on it. Got it, got it. So now I'll go to the next question. So it's kind of in line, I mean, we already discussed this, I think, but uh, how would we ensure that our technology solutions are not only advanced, but also directly aligned with the client's strategic objectives? Uh, Bala, <clears throat> Sure. So, so for you to align with what the client's objectives are, you need to know what the client objective is, right? Mm -hmm. First of all. And I can bet not many of these service providers have a client playbook prepared for each client. Mm -hmm. When I say a client playbook, be able to capture as much detail in terms of what their overall or annual project plans are. What is their overall goal? Where are they moving towards? What is their customer base? In fact, when we started building those, the two clients that I kind of switched from staff org to um, what do you call it, service, uh, solutions provider, we built a playbook for each client where we knew exactly what their budget is, annual budget is, how much is being spent to our competitors versus how much is there out there for us to grab, right? What are some of the most critical projects which are key for their stakeholders as well as their board members? A lot of the intel that need to get captured in terms of so, uh, what the client it, it itself is, without which you cannot really propose in terms of aligning your solution to what the client's needs are. You're going to pitch a whole bunch of solutions which may not align with what the client needs are. So that is a right. fundamental work that needs to happen. And then you define your GTM strategy, your go-to-market strategy for the particular client, right? Yeah, that's, that's very thoughtful. So 360 degree profile is what you're saying we need yeah, to absolutely. build. Right. Okay, got it. Yeah, I'll just add okay. one point to that. I think uh, uh, while that 360 degree profile is definitely required, and, and I think Bala made a good point about having the playbook, uh, a lot of customers are also wanting to know what is my competition doing? Uh, mm -hmm. yes. Is there an overlap? Am I doing something different? Can I do something different? Or are they doing something different that I am not? Right. So to be able to add that element of intelligence uh, and share it, 
uh, well, obviously, uh, you you can add that intelligence based upon whatever insights you have in the public domain. Uh, you would rather not share competitive intelligence uh, as in real intelligence, but whatever information is available, I think that element of it will will probably uh, ensure that the client that you are trying to build trust on as a strategic partner is sees you probably more more aligned and the right person to take. Yeah, you, 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 you hit it on the nail. Understanding the industry and be able to say, I'm going to do financial services, manufacturing, and say healthcare. Right? These right. are the three markets that I'm going to be focusing on, build my capability around it, and go to market. Right? Then it makes your success easier and for the client to trust you that these are the areas that you specialize in. Yeah. Because the clients want you to... See, I, I want to build a regular cookie-cutter house versus a mansion. Two different skill sets. Obviously. Right? So my definition of what I want, I need a builder who understands my needs and who have done it in the past and be able to design and build based on the quality that I require. So similar applies to any service provider. All right. Okay, sounds good. So thank you for answering those two questions. I think uh, maybe I think we have a few more minutes. We could just take maybe one more topic uh, and then we'll close it down because it's okay. sure. we're getting close to one hour. So maybe I'll start with Manish. Uh, so advice for others, you know, uh, companies, you know, who are, there are a lot of people I think joined here uh, on this uh, audience. So who are aspiring to be, you know, a strategic partner, uh, as as Bala said, uh, not IBMs, right? So uh, there are a lot of mom and shop companies, like, you know, 50 people, 100 people, 200 people, 500 people. So they are still in the service provider stage, but they want to become strategic partner. So what advice you offer if somebody is you know, transitioning uh, to become a strategic partner? Well, I'll keep it very pointed uh, in the interest of time. I think, uh, firstly, uh, it's, it's, it's important for them to understand the benefits of this new model we are talking about or moving from IT to a strategic and, and for them to be able to articulate it to the customer as well, that, that they need to be proactive, they need to be more customer centric. Uh, they need to partner, right? Uh, irrespective of whether the enterprise is large, mid-size or small, uh, you live in a world where you need to cooperate. Uh, you 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 need to get into cooperation. You cannot compete. Right? So right. building a large partner ecosystem is absolutely important, even for small to mid-size IT service providers who are trying to become strategic partners. Right? So that's the third one. Uh, fourth one, I think you need to focus on uh, delivering a customer value. Uh, specifically with emerging technologies, uh, any IT service provider can be looked at as a prospect to uh, being a strategic partner if the focus is around articulating and demonstrating productivity gains, right? Be it internal or external, right? So that's that's another focus that IT service providers need to uh, have. And uh, lastly, I think uh, it's it's all about uh, being uh, prepared yourself from the resistance that comes in uh, with any transition that you want to make, right? And, right? and your ability to apply it to internal employees as well as uh, make the business understand is, is absolutely important. So I think these are the four or five uh, points, uh, again, ever growing with, uh, uh, with the business and technology, but these are the four or five points that can really help any IT services organization to at least to move on that journey to become a strategic partner uh, more rapidly. Sounds good, Manish. Okay. Any last minute thoughts, uh, advice, uh, Bala? And I, I would suggest looking at it as an IT solutions partner. If so, there is an investment required. Mm -hmm. Hire a, a, a strategic delivery executive, right? If you don't want to invest, say, $200,000 on hiring an, a delivery executive, Hire a PM slash engagement manager, right? 50% is billable on the client and 50% he's responsible to make sure he builds relationship 
within the client and expand the client base. If you don't have that one point person who is responsible for the client, you're not going to grow that account. Right. Okay. Rajat, any, th any thoughts? Last minute yeah, advice? So, yeah, I'll keep it very quick. Uh, I know Bala spoke about the people aspect. Uh, so for me, it's process and technology. I think process from the mindset perspective. And I'll give you an example, very, very simple example. When uh, my sales guy as an IT service provider goes and gets a requirement, he needs to ask question, why do you need these skills? What program are you executing? Is it a product engineering program or is it a application integration program or a development program, right? So you have to extrapolate and abstract from there. So it's a mindset. It's a whole process of solutioning mindset rather than the yeah. services mindset, right? And, and the third is technology, as we spoke about in the last question also. We need to have playbooks defined. And these playbooks are not client-centric. Today, everyone needs cloud migration. Everyone needs operational optimization. Everyone needs cost takeouts. It is a very, very standard for every company. It needs right. to be created. And that's all. Okay. Thank you so much, Charles.